Hello, everyone. Yeah, I will introduce myself. My name is Ioan Nechas, and I, you will spend some time with me talking about the insights. And I hope you will enjoy at least a bit of it. If not, you know, internet is free. You can also, we are not locking the doors, so. But I hope uh, you will actually get something out. Also, one important thing, the, there's a lot of slippery slopes, and not only slopes out there. I tested uh, on myself, so be careful uh, and not, not, fail, not fall as I did. Uh, so that was the most important thing you should learn about this talk. And I guess we can just go ahead and get started with, uh, with the content. So uh, one warning, uh, this presentation contains some subliminal messages. Podprahové správy, podprahovou reklamu. So uh, watch for that and I will ask you at the end like what, what was the content. Uh, so be prepared. So uh, a bit about me, uh, I'm this little guy here. Uh, uh, I act as a tech lead for an uh, initiative called Connected Customer Experience. And uh, yeah, we are trying to improve the supportability of our products based on the health data that we are getting from the clusters that are running uh, of the Red Hat products. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, to help out a bit the technical part there. Uh, so the problem domain that we are going to talk about uh, is uh, how we can actually help running the software when you don't have direct access to the systems and the only thing that you have is some and usually multiple ways how to gather the information about the remote hosts. So we need to somehow be able to get and, and process and uh, uh, deal with the data that, that we get. And we, of course, have also uh, a lot of formats. So you can think about different formats of the log messages, different formats for the configuration of the software, because you know that's fun creating new formats. Uh, so, uh, for example, like what kind of data we are talking about? When you uh, run your software, uh, you know you might have some minimal requirements, like when you have uh, 200 megabytes for running uh, OpenStack or OpenShift or whatever, you will probably not succeed. So, you know, one thing is that just knowing where the software is running, also knowing how the software is configured uh, has uh, or can have a lot of impact in terms of like if the software will run correctly or not. And of course, uh, all the software should produce some uh, information about its run. So uh, you might know bar log or journal deal or whatever it is for collecting the, the log information. And of course, like there are many other, other things we can watch for. Uh, so what I would like to talk about is one project, one particular project that is open source uh, and it's called Insights Core. Uh, it's available at GitHub and it's the, as, as the name says, it's the, uh, sits, sitting at the core of the Red Hat product called Insights, Red Hat Insights, that we are building to help our customers uh, and give them advices about the, uh, how they run uh, our software. So this will be a presentation about how uh, this software, like the, the core of it, works, and uh, it will also have some, uh, will uh, experience some advantage with, or adventure, let's say, with the live demo, which is always fun. Uh, so this is the, one of the tools that can help you actually with dealing with the data that we are getting from the customers and analy analyzing that. So uh, some of the properties is that we try uh, for it to be versatile. So what I will be showing is running this tool against live system. So like I don't need to kind of gather any information in terms of like copying files or, uh, at the disk and so on. But we can also uh, run the tool against the data that were co collected uh, from remote machines. So think about source reports, as one, one of the examples. How many of you know SOS report? Okay, so uh, uh, you are familiar with that. With, with those that don't, it's basically a tool that allows to collect as much health data information about the system to be shared when somebody else tries to help you. Uh, yeah, and this is not just a set of uh, like bash scripts or some set of regular expressions with set that you could do with do as well. Uh, we actually using it as, the, as I mentioned, as, as the core as on, of multiple production systems. So uh, we try to, to be as robust as possible. 
And at the same time, we also need to minimize the set of requirements or dependencies for the software so that actually we can run it and make it as a, as a dependency by itself. So we don't want to download the whole internet when you are uh, installing this thing. Yeah. So uh, the purposes uh, are we can parse the raw files with it. We can define data model on top of these files, this data. And then we can either define rules or extract uh, additional data so that we can do further processing. So uh, the idea is that when you, you can have multiple sources about the information, you can have the live, live data, you can run some commands to get like, uh, information about the system, or you can have the SOS reports, or you can have the insights archives themselves. We have uh, additional way how to collect the data about the system. So the idea is we have many ways how to collect the data, but we want to have a single model that describes the, this data and allows us to treat it in a uniform way. So once we have the data uh, uh, modeled, and as I mentioned, we have uh, multiple sources of this data, uh, the more modern approach also is to use the Prometheus for, for, uh, for metrics, and we are also using insights to be able to work with that. So uh, we can show this example with, uh, for example, looking at the information about the memory. So this, is, will, be, this will be the fun part about the live demo. Uh, so I'm switching uh, to my terminal, hopefully you see it, and I will just run Python. So one, one thing that I've not mentioned, the inside score is written in Python, and uh, basically when I talk, talk about the modeling the, the data, we are, we are modeling it using the, the Python objects, and we can then use it uh, this way. So the first thing you need to do is to uh, import uh, from insights import. Um, this is for uh, the use case when I'm actually using just the Python uh, shell or IPython to explore the data. I will then show how, how we can actually uh, use it for defining some rules. So what I'm interested in is memory, memory information about the system. So uh, the insight itself defines a lot of different parsers and, and uh, models already that allows you to, to do this. So we don't need to parse the memory information about the system on our own, but instead we can use already what's already there. So uh, from the insights, uh, we have parsers, many parsers defined. Memory info is one of those. And I've already looked in the documentation that I'm interested in the mem info class. And I have invalid syntax. Uh, because I need import. OK, so I in imported my class. Like, nothing happened yet. What I will do now is run the gathering phase of the insights that will happen just at this computer and store it in some, some data. So uh, that's why I imported the run method in the first place. I will run that. Uh, since it's running really live gathering of the data, it takes a few seconds. And then I can ask this data object to get the mem info, uh, object of the mem info class. OK? And when I try to search about the, or look for the total uh, attribute or parameter on this object, I actually got the number. So for those that don't see below, this is the total uh, number of, what is bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, kilobytes? What's your guess? I think, it, I think it's bytes, actually, uh, of this particular machine. So without needing to do uh, anything else, I have the information about the system, and we can use it for, for doing some, some interesting stuff with that. So uh, that was just a like, short example on how these models, parsers, inside score itself can be used to deal with the local machine. And uh, in the further examples, we also will look how this can be used against, for example, the source reports. So one of the main reasons like why the project was created uh, is actually to be able to define some rules about the system. So when I have the, the memory information and I have a software that requires uh, some memory to run successfully, you can combine this information and when you codify it, allow the 
customers or users to run it, you can give them a unified way how, how you tell them whether they are good or not in terms of uh, running the software. Uh, so yeah, they are defined on top of the model and the logic can indicate the potential problem. Sometimes it might not be a problem itself, but it still may uh, suggest improvement. So you, know, you might be running the software in some uh, misconfigured way, and if there is somebody that knows how to configure it properly, this is the tool that allows to, uh, to uh, automate this thing. So yeah, sometimes you know, people use your stuff, it somehow works, but it's not uh, done in a way that was meant in the first place. So, you know, like, you probably can't get into, uh, into the locker, but, you know, uh, maybe not designed that way, and you can be more effective. So, let's, let's take a look at uh, seeing how the inside core can be used to actually parse the, uh, some configuration files. So, that's uh, another thing that uh, is pretty neat about the uh, inside score is that defines by itself a set of parsers on top of the configuration files that allow you to work with this, uh, with this uh, thing more in more uh, programmatic way. So uh, one thing that I will do is looking at the uh, configuration of the HTTPD. Uh, I've actually configured it here. Uh, so just to show you my HTTPD D, I can't speak and type at the same time. Um, so I have here some uh, configuration about the performance characteristics and I set up the max request workers for the Apache to be five. So let's see how I could get the, to this information using the inside score. And the idea is that you know, if you have some uh, total amount of memory to use, uh, for, let's say, for the HTTPD, uh, then it also means that you have, like, if one worker in the HTTPD has requirements, minimal requirements for, for some memory, you can calculate what's the maximum amount of workers that is still suitable for this machine. And if it exceeds, like, if I configure the number too high here, uh, I would expect that something could tell me that you are doing something wrong either increase your memory or uh, lower the, the max request workers. So let's see first like, how I can, can treat the etcd uh, HTTPD uh, config files. One thing that you can notice that like the, the configuration of the um, Apache or the HTTPD is composed from many files. So you, know, you could grab the things like that, but uh, we can probably do better. So what I will do, in uh, this example is using the uh, HTTPD parser and the tree representation of the data. So from insights, uh, I will not explain in this talk what combiners mean, uh, but uh, I can give you some information later. Uh, import get tree. The, the get tree method actually gives me the tree information. So. Uh, if I do HTTPD get three, I actually got <coughs> the content of all the configuration for my HTTPD. And uh, I can, for example, uh, and let me just import also some querying helpers. And what I can do is in the HTTPD find the configuration or, or for configuration key that contains workers. Okay, so this loaded the data, uh, looked at all the configuration of the HTTPD, and somehow found that this particular key has the value five. So in this, like, it just allowed me to explore this without me having to know exactly. So this is uh, also kind of helpful in uh, Kind of exploring the data. Uh, and I see that I'm moving too slowly, so I will sh uh, switch into the faster uh, pace. So bear with me. Uh, so yeah, this is the, the thing that I was showing you. We have multiple ways how to, how to parse this thing, and it's also extendable for, for more information. So uh, 
what we can do uh, once we have the uh, parser defined is define a rule, which in this case will look, and that's, that's what I mentioned before, uh, we look at the memory information uh, of, the, uh, of the machine, we look at the HTTP configuration and compare if the size of the workers is actually matching the, the required, uh, uh, required amount. And yeah, one thing that I have not shown is that we can actually run this against uh, some SOS report as well. So if I go and run this particular file, which is the uh, Apache max, max, uh, max workers, and I run it against some data, source report with some HTTPD, actually see that the rule max workers check has failed because max workers is set to six and the recommended uh, value is three. Like we could have more uh, formatting about the message but you, you, get, uh, you get the point. There's also another thing that the insights do is actually defining the dependencies and we can handle the case where the data or some rules that we are def defining are not actually present in the file. So let's say if I run it against the, the archive that has no HTTPD installed, I, not, I don't get exceptions, I get information that some missing, there were some missing de uh, dependencies. So you can actually have these rules defined for multiple uh, software. So uh, yeah, that, that's, that's what was covered with by this slide. And I also show this example. Yeah, uh, so another thing that we do is sometimes writing the, the rules itself is not the, like, kind of the most efficient way to do, but we can also take the data from the archives and do some AI with that. And sometimes the AI means just a bunch of ifs, but uh, after uh, working with this stuff uh, for some time, I'm less skeptical because I've actually seen some success with applying machine learning techniques on, on this data. So uh, I, I think next, week, or next year we'll have more to tell, talk about this part as well. But the first thing before we can actually do this kind of processing is actually extracting the data from the archives, from the raw format, into some format that we can actually plug into the uh, machine learning algorithms to get some, some additional uh, information. So uh, I will not show the demo because we don't have that much time for that, but the idea is basically being able to extract some facts and then uh, plug it into a machine learning uh, uh, me mechanisms, machinery. So, uh, and that brings me to what actually we do in the Insights right now. So Insights has been around for some time already, over two years I think, maybe more, and they were focusing on the, on the rail, on the operating system case. And what we are doing right now is actually applying these techniques uh, at the OpenShift space. And this uh, brings new challenges. We have things that are progressing more in the OpenShift world. We have more health information already. And we can still leverage the things that we already had to deal with this data and actually uh, provide the similar, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the similar uh, suggestions as we do for the oper uh, oper uh, operating system rel. So uh, I will not go to the examples, uh, but at the end of the day, what we do is actually try to search for problems and give hints. So this says that this might be how Windows used to do that sometimes, maybe not, not anymore. So we try to do, like the result of our work should be instead of the sleep, actually do real work and then getting the real uh, real uh, suggestions out of that. So, uh, and we are hiring, so if, if you are interested, please uh, let us know. And that gives us to the Q&A session. So please, if you have any questions, now it's your time. Uh, no, uh, and yeah, so, the question is if we are running only against source reports and the answer is no. As I mentioned, uh, the source report is one of the most, uh, like contain the most of the information, but sometimes you, you don't want to like send everything. 
And we are, for example, you can define parsers for the insights archives. Uh, in the OpenShift world, world, you might be familiar with the mass gather tool, which is equivalent of the source report, but for the OpenShift. And we have uh, defined the parsers for that as well. And we also can load, for example, data from the Prometheus. So like, we can still uh, use that as well. Any other question? Yeah? Does Insights client uh, send data back only to the in a bulk thing at a period at every at a period of time, or does it sometimes go off the triggers like the core template or the CPU resize or the memory space? Yeah, so the insights client, that's the, the client tool that we are actually using for collecting the regular data about the uh, about the system. And the question was if it's running only regularly or if it can even collect ad hoc information or, or run uh, on demand. So right now we are running periodically every night and what can we kind of influence is the, uh, for example, when we are looking for the new error message in, in logs, we can kind of extend that. So that's, that's the way how we can uh, influence what gets collected but we are not running it as a demon that we would be triggering on demand. That, like we might Turn that at some point, but but we didn't uh, do that yet. Yeah. Yeah. Right now we are focusing on the cluster because we, if you have broken cluster, it doesn't matter even to to, to think about the, the application health. But once we figure out that part, I expect that we would be moving towards the, the layer above that. Yeah, so we, uh, as a team, uh, yeah, uh, the question is if, like, based on the information, if we can do the remediations only, like, from the cloud side or if there is intent to also be able to do something locally. So we, as a team, are focusing on the cloud integration and the cloud remediations. So if there is any kind of need for doing this or being able to, to leverage this even, like, on-premise on, on without connecting, it would probably need to be more effort of the product team using that. But uh, the tool itself is pretty straightforward, uh, uh, simple to use, and these integrations can be used without any cloud integration uh, as well. So like, uh, that, that was the purpose of this talk as well, is to show that you don't need almost anything. You don't need to be connected to the cloud.com to be able to use Insights Core and uh, all, all as good as it, it has. And I guess that actually took us to the uh, end of the presentation, or we have one, one more minute. So. One quick question. Yeah, I have one question. What was the what was the message that was there hidden somehow? Uh, Space Max. And the second part was rocks. Okay, so so you at least know my favorite editor, and I had to put it somehow into the message. So this is the end of the presentation. So thanks all for uh, coming. I hope you enjoyed that. And, uh, enjoy the